start off with Mr. Urs Bolt. Yours? Bolt. And Energy Undersecretary Donato D. Marcos, Director for Renewable Energy Management Bureau, uh, Director Mario Marcigan, and Shweta Kana, Energy and Climate Change Expert. Uh, before we open the floor for your questions, we also request everyone to limit your questions within the bounds of this conference alone and to ask all your questions now because right after uh, our officials and guests will be attending other relevant activities. So may we now open the floor please for the, those who are present from CNN and or Okay, uh, sir, you say, maybe you can read the statement of the department. I think uh, we should uh, acknowledge or recognize the Mr. George Paul, so that at least he can keep it from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Mr. George Paul, uh, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. I'm sorry for the delay. We had to be out with the power pump power plant. We left at uh, before 3 o'clock in the morning. I was rocket speeding two and a half hours. Unfortunately, the way back into the customers. So we left before 12 o'clock. So sorry again for keeping you waiting here. I know traffic is heavy, but you're probably more used than I am. I'm just here for the first uh, two weeks. I'm leaving tonight back to Switzerland. Now, Energy for Humanity, which I represent, as you know, my name is Lars Bolt, as you can see here. I'm the, the director of the Swiss chapter and co-founder of the Swiss Association. We are a global NGO, but currently mainly active out of uh, London and Switzerland, with activities in the United States and uh, England and Switzerland, of course, and Finland and some other countries to come. Now, Energy for Humanity was founded by the inspiration of the uh, documentary Pandora's Promise. Who of you have ever heard of Pandora's Promise? Film director Robert Stone made a documentary about nuclear energy, which is actually telling the story of five uh, former anti-nuclear protagonists. And they uh, were in these films and then they came to Fukushima and they had to change the script again. Out of this, uh, uh, what uh, Robert Stone created an award-winning documentary, which is at a constant level of 7.4 on the IMDb rating, which is very high for such a movie, which is a controversial topic, as you all probably are aware. Now, I organized the Swiss premiere because I thought this is an eye-opening documentary, and after this, a few months later, we founded Energy for Humanity, together with Robert Stone, Daniel Agutter, a Swiss philanthropist, and uh, Kirsty Govin in London. And I founded then the Swiss Association. And here I represent the global uh, activities of energy of humanity, and I'm happy to be here also, given the fact that my partner is Filipina, who is living in Switzerland for many years, and I came here the first time to meet her family, and I had the luck to meet Karen Davila in, uh, in March. In March, for uh, at, at the holiday after volunteering, and somehow I came to the topic uh, talking about nuclear energy, and she said you have to come to my studio. That happened last Monday. I was at, on ANC Head Start. At that ANC Head Start talk, obviously released a lot of reactions, including meetings with Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi, with the Chamber of Commerce, and a lot of reactions of, uh, on Twitter and Facebook. And here I am today at the press conference with uh, coverage from CNN Philippines. Thank you for being here. So that's uh, from my side uh, the opening. As I said, I visited Bhutan. Maybe to end the uh, opening um, statement, Energy of Humanity is probably the first NGO, which is an environmental organization, which is also uh, supportive of nuclear energy because we believe we need nuclear energy in a power mix to be clean and at the same time cheap. 
and replace, massively replace uh, base load power. We don't, we don't imagine that solar and wind will be enough, or hydro and all that. Okay. May I hand over to the secretary? Okay, for the second statement would be uh, Energy Under Secretary Donato Marcos for the department statement on the year energy. Statement of Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi on nuclear energy utilization. The Duterte administration through the Department of Energy puts premium on the provision of quality, reliable, adequate, secure and reasonably priced energy by looking at all possible resources that the country can utilize to achieve our industrialization goals. To diversify the energy mix, the Department of Energy will study nuclear energy as a possible option for the Philippines. We stand behind the President's uh, pronouncement on ensuring the safe utilization of all energy resources especially with a renewed interest on in nuclear energy technology. The DOE is currently proceeding with unified and coordinated uh, efforts and activities with the creation of nuclear power energy program implement, implementing organization or NEPIO. The NEPIO is headed by a steering committee with top uh, Department of Energy officials at the helm while DOE bureaus will create technical working groups, TWGs, to ensure effective and timely implementation of its functions and responsibilities. The Department of Science and Technology and its attached agency, DOE attached agencies, other relevant government offices and local and international partner organizations, will be asked to assist the NEPIO in its work. During the recent International Atomic Energy Agency Inter International Conference on the prospect for nuclear power in the Asia-Pacific region. We pointed out that the country should have a clear position in nuclear power. A well-informed decision is key to a sustainable and comprehensive energy program. With all the new findings, technological advancement and successful experiences of countries around the world, nuclear energy holds much promise for long-term energy plans. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bolt and Undersecretary Marcos for your statements. Uh, now we open the floor for questions. Uh, any, anyone? Any questions? Can we have a little uh, glimpse of the tour a while ago? Uh, I think Miss Kana and uh, can have us uh, a little bit of story because they uh, toured the NPP a while ago. It's very, very Thank you so much. Uh, so as a child, I've always grow, uh, you know, my father was an electrical engineer and I grew up on nuclear power plant as a child. So I have lived in almost, uh, you know, uh, most of the nuclear power plants back in India. Um, as a country which has now almost second largest number of in-plan uh, nuclear power reactors, the, the nuclear power energy uh, program is very aggressive in India. Um, and today, um, you know, after visiting the Bhutan nuclear power plant, I realized that there is a huge scope. Uh, Philippines at this point of time is at inflection point. It is now or never. Energy parity needs to be filled. Um, and after having visited the nuclear power plant, let me tell you, I think for that generation, it is one of the, one of the best state-of-the-art uh, nuclear power plant. Similar kind of system plants are there in South Korea and Slovenia, which are working absolutely fine. Um, it would be a great thing if the uh, Philippines, and I would request Department of Energy as well, if the present facility could be leveraged to kickstart the nuclear energy journey in nuclear, in Philippines. Nuclear energy is the cleanest energy with terms, in terms of its carbon footprint, 
the land, land footprint is uh, pretty low compared to other renewable energy sources or um, uh, you know traditional energy sources. After having understand uh, you know understanding these these facts, I think it is just about the right time to look at uh, reopening a brand nuclear power plant and plan for future power, uh, power plants as well. Just to let you know, Vietnam, Indonesia, Bangladesh, these kind of countries are aggressively um, going ahead with their nuclear energy uh, plants. So that's that's my uh, humble request. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miss Anna. Again, are there any questions from the, our friends from the media? Actually, there is no clear direction on that, uh, on that uh, issue. The, uh, we are now in the process. The Secretary has already signed and instituted a NAPIO. No? NAPIO is a nuclear energy uh, program implementing organization wherein it will uh, collectively and comprehensively study uh, all about uh, nuclear and its potential in the country. Uh, the the NEPIO uh, is not only uh, basically pertain and, pertaining and focus to the reopening of the land nuclear power plant. It's the whole uh, nuclear policy program that uh, is being studied here, especially that we are, uh, we are in the direction of establishing the, the healthy and uh, reasonable price, and sustainable and predictable uh, uh, energy mix policy. That's why we have to really explore and uh, study all the possible options that uh, that will help us to come up with the uh, sustainable, secure, and reasonable price uh, electricity costs. And, uh, and actually, the bottom line of that is uh, for the general welfare of the Filipino people, which is the utmost uh, objective in regards of the Duterte administration for the Filipinos. So in the Indian, it's not really focused only on Batano. It's the whole program itself. So, uh, it will be, uh, parang it will be reopened by this time. We are all in the study, you know, and we, we would like the, we would like the people uh, to really be educated by coming up with an intensive and massive uh, education, information, and uh, communication campaign. Uh, so there's a need really for, uh, of course, for the social acceptability and the study, uh, and the, uh, to be submitted to the national consultation, and the registration of Congress also is uh, most likely required, as pronounced also by the President himself. Um, maybe, Director Mark, with that. Uh, direction of the department and regard to yeah thank you very much uh Robert. actually the direction that we are looking at is looking at the uh, optimum uh, energy mix for our uh, general consumers as uh, we have been advised we are more looking on the demand side and that's why we will have no bias in terms of fuel sources in establishing the base load requirement the mid merit requirements and uh, as well as the picking requirements. So any project or energy resource that will qualify based on the demand qualification or classifications, then there is, we are looking at sufficiently supplying the energy requirement of the general public. So where are we now is that we have already the working mechanisms for renewable energy, we have the conventional energy, and we are currently looking at what would be the options for us embarking on nuclear technologies as part of our the entire energy mix for the country. So we're looking at all the directions that we can have. 
Well, every fuel or every resource and technologies will have its right place in addressing the needs of the country. Thank you. Okay, um, another question from Sir. Okay, from WhatsApp Philippines. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Uh, it was said that it will, we will need uh, one billion dollars to revive the Bataan nuclear power plant, and uh, there's a lot of question about the safety. So, do you think it's how, do you have an idea how much it will take? Uh, it will make uh, it will require us to just create a new one, and or is it really still safe to use the existing one? Actually, we are not. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are not really uh, focused only on the reopening of uh, the Bataan nuclear power plant. Although it may be one of the of the aspect in the study you know, to to study the reopening and rehabilitation of Bataan nuclear power plant. With regards to the one billion dollar expense that you mentioned, it was an output from the from the review and audit and rehabilitation uh, uh, proposal from Capco Company that was done in 2008. Uh, it was actually in, a, in response to the requirements of the International uh, Atomic Energy Agency uh, requirements wherein uh, it said that the BNPP before coming up to a decision should be uh, uh, should be audit and uh, review regarding its structures and uh, what are those uh, parts that have to be replaced or rehabilitated or repaired or otherwise uh, what are those scope or structural uh, uh, structural uh, aspects that has to be really uh, addressed mm -hmm. so with regards to again I will uh, repeat that this is a whole nuclear energy program of the country it doesn't only deal and focus in the reopening and rehabilitation of the nuclear power plant. As uh, Dr. Mario had mentioned, there is no bias on whatever energy resource will be used. It's, it's a, it's a demand-driven uh, objective wherein uh, uh, DOE will just be sensitive and responsive to, to whatever should come up with a healthy, healthy, healthy mix and reasonably priced electricity. And again, it's for the general welfare of the constituency, for the Philippine people. Uh, uh, the lady from CNN. Uh, so, okay. Let me react quickly uh, to this. Uh, so I was on a solicitation with uh, nuclear power plant in Town today. Obviously, it's a unique opportunity to go into a core, in a, into a reactor core, because the only very few plants, in my view, it's only uh, Vienna, which is straight north, which went uh, basically free life, tested, but then there was a public vote and they voted against. Now they import uh, atomic power to car for the shop for from Czech Republic and Slovenia, probably. But that's another story. So they have not their own, but they have probably foreign nuclear energy. Now in uh, in Bata, my impression was, and I also had some background checks done overnight, uh, since yesterday, that, uh, that this plan could definitely go online. Of course, as the uh, Under Secretary said, it needs to be clearly reviewed, not just in terms of technical feasibility, but also economical. But security wise, this is one of the safest power plants built as a pressurized water reactor. So we looked at the track record of uh, the, the plant, which is a similar, the reference plant in Slovenia, in Kursu, uh, uh, is the name, I think. And that's uh, again a 600 uh, megawatt uh, power plant, and it has fantastic track record. It has compared to Fukushima, which is not the same. It's a first generation plant in Fukushima, which wasn't upgraded, and we had uh, the, there were these problems, which we don't want to go into deep now unless you wish to. Um, you have filter systems, you have uh, uh, autonomous power supply without external power supply if you have overheating in the cooling system for seven days. 
which is much longer than I, I was normally aware of. That's, that's for a second generation nuclear power plant with two loops, uh, a very uh, safe uh, layout, and several other features which are actually not in place in Fukushima. Because many people always ask, is Fukushima can happen again? Okay, there is a tsunami can happen. Now this plant is 80 meters above sea level. It doesn't even need a wall around. Backup diesel generators on the backside. So away from them, there would be a, a huge wave coming. But uh, I'm not even sure if there's such a tsunami at this end, uh, or this side of the island uh, could actually even happen. So I would say that's probably not, uh, not to worry about. But the, the safety features of this pressurized water reactor are very solid. They run uh, for decades now in Slovenia, provides 40% of power generation in Slovenia. Obviously, they have a lot of hydropower there too. It's a small country compared to the Philippines. And maybe getting back, should you do this or not? We need several options. I fully agree with the Secretary. I uh, also had uh, an interesting talk with uh, Senator Vin uh, Kachalian yesterday and his team. And it seems like they're also very pragmatic in that sense and independently look at different options. So that's basically going in line with what we just heard from Under Secretary. And we look at the options. Short term options is definitely the Balta nuclear power plant because you already have uh, basically the whole uh, infrastructure in place. You need to review it and then uh, add some more features probably. And you already have. Uh, you have the supply chain already need to do the regulation, which is probably already in a draft version prepared because it was pre life at that time before and needs to be upgraded. And it would also help to build uh, the competence and the skill sets which is needed for then the program to develop into newer third generation advanced type of reactors, which would certainly be uh, ideal for this country, which are then passive, passive security features, basically uh, almost walk away safe. That walk away safety would then come in fourth generation, which we would expect by the end of the 20s, we are damaging for humanity. And then you will have uh, nuclear power plants, which will also complement renewable energy like solar and wind, with molten salt storage, for instance, also with liquid fuel meltdown proof, and then you probably have no more reason to oppose nuclear energy. So in our view at Energy for Humanity going long term, there is no reason not to enter the new nuclear age. It's coming. It's unavoidable. Economic reasons are very clear. Around the country which have now heavily um, fossil fuel based power supply and on top all the transportation mobility which is expanding so massively because it grows so fast it's causing uh, very bad air that means a lot of health issues and you know that in Manila, I mean for me this is a horrible air and you're not used to it coming from Switzerland I was living in London London is much cleaner now but they introduced uh, some measures that the traffic was reduced in the city I'm not sure if that's a very popular measure here but I heard that uh, should be increased car tax, also fuel tax, but